2023 has been a very eventful year for transit. Like the opening of the East Side Access in New York City, the completion of Honolulu's first metro line, the finishing of the Big Circle Line in Moscow, and so much more. But with 2023 coming to an end and 2024 around the corner, I think we should talk about some transit events happening in 2024. Of course, with infrastructure projects, things change a lot, so predicting events is pretty hard. But we can always try to give our best estimates. And to further give us a little bit of wiggle room, we will divide 2024 into quarters, with the first quarter being from January to March, the second quarter being from April to June, the third quarter being from July to September, and the fourth quarter being from October to December. With that being said, let's start in the first quarter in 2024. In January, Sao Paulo will open Line 17 after 13 years of construction. And this is interesting as Line 17 is the second monorail line in Sao Paulo after Line 15, and is the first line in Sao Paulo to feature branches. But the line has been plagued with numerous setbacks, and it doesn't help that Line 15, also a monorail line, has seen dozens of operational issues since its inception in 2014. Nevertheless, it will be interesting to see the response when Line 17 finally opens. New York City will complete the 63rd Street reconstruction project by this time, and service has been shut down for about 4 months. With reconstruction, the F has been rerouted to the 53rd Street Tunnel, something broadly popular with both the MTA and transit riders. In fact, the MTA proposed this change in 2020 only for the pandemic to axe those plans. But with the completion of the 63rd Street Tunnel reconstruction project, the MTA will likely make a decision on whether the F and M would be swapped. And if it does happen, which seems very likely, it would be the first time in a generation that the MTA implements some sort of deinterlining. Finally, in March of 2024, Paris will open the first extension project of the Grand Paris Express, Line 11 to Rosny Boy Perrier. And this is also a feat for Line 11, which has not seen an extension since 1937. This extension is done in anticipation for the 2024 Olympics and a future connection to Line 15. Heading into the second quarter of 2024, Seoul will finally open the long-awaited GTXA. With the Seoul metropolitan area being massive, Seoul needs some dedicated express service, and the GTX was designed to provide that, and the first phase of that will open in April of 2024. This will provide faster service to Suwon and Seongnam residents, who can be on the Suin Bandang line for up to an hour and 30 minutes. The Salto Banan in Stockholm will finally reopen after a much needed rehabilitation project. The line was first opened in the 1890s, and by the 2010s, the line was pretty much falling apart. So in 2016, the western section was shut down, and in 2023, the entire line was shut down with it. But by spring of 2024, the Salto Banan will finally reopen, and with modern rolling stock coming in in the following years, we will be seeing at a Salto Banan ready for the 21st century. Chicago's Damon Station will also open by this time. The station, located on the Lake Street branch of the Green Line, closed in 1948 as a result of closing down unnecessary stations. But times have changed, and now the area hosts new housing and the United Center. So the station now is necessary, and is the first station in Chicago since Washington and Wabash in 2017. Finally, we are back in Paris, but this time with Line 14. The second and third projects of the Grand Paris Express would see Line 14 being extended north to saint denis Pleyel for future connections to Line 15, 16, and 17, and to the south to Orly Airport for a future connection to Line 18. All of these extension projects will make Line 14 the longest line in the Paris metro, which is going to be surpassed by Line 15 sometime in the future. Heading into the third quarter of 2024, the long-awaited Eglinton LRT in Toronto will open. Proposed in 2007, this line is the first new line in Toronto to open in 22 years. And this is eated, as there is only one east-west corridor in all of Toronto, and that line is chronically over capacity. But the project, just like Line 17 in Sao Paulo, has faced numerous setbacks, 
and its opening date has been pushed back numerous times. So it will be interesting to see the reaction once Line 5 finally opens. The third quarter of 2024 is not very busy, but the fourth quarter makes up for that. So let's begin in Singapore, where they will be opening two new extensions of two very busy lines. The first one is the Pongo Coast extension on the Northeast Line. This represents the first time the Northeast Line has ever been extended since its inception in 2003. The second extension is the Thompson East Coast Line to Bayshore, and this extension will serve Singapore well, as it will relieve the overcrowded East-West Line in the area. The reason why I put these two lines in the fourth quarter is because there is no set date for it other than 2024. And with Singapore opening most of its extensions in the fourth quarter recently, it would be the most logical that I put them here. Cairo will open its fourth metro line, Line 4. The Cairo metro sees insane ridership, and the three lines that it has is insufficient for the 3.6 million riders it sees daily. So Line 4 will greatly ease congestion on the Cairo metro, though it will likely become overcrowded within a few months, which is why more train lines are being planned. Back in Asia, Line 3 will finally open in Beijing and will serve the Dongba neighborhood. But what is interesting is that the Beijing metro is very extensive, going from Line 1 all the way to Line 19, plus other rail lines like the Champing and Yizhuan lines. And while the Beijing metro did skip a few numbers, those numbers were eventually filled, except Line 3. Line 3 has been proposed for 50 plus years, meaning that finally, after 50 years, the 3 designation will finally be filled. And so would the dream of a subway reaching the Dongba neighborhood, a dense residential area. Also in China, a new loop line in Guangzhou will finally be opened. Called Line 11, and there are so many Line 11s in this video, this will act as a distributor line for not only Guangzhou, but for the entire Pearl River Delta region. Already, the Guangzhou Metro has numerous capacity issues, especially with Lines 3 and 5. So who knows what Line 11 will see, acting as the main distributor line. Which is why, unlike Line 3, Line 11 is being designed with Type A cars, which is reserved for lines that have strong ridership. Finally, back in New York City, the Metro card will officially be phased out by this point. This means that the icon that is associated with the New York City subway will no longer be compatible. Omni will fully replace the Metro card, meaning that Omni will be the icon that is associated with the New York City subway. And with that, this marks the end of this video. 2024 is obviously going to be a very eventful year for the transit, and I didn't mention a ton of other lines for the sake of time. So feel free to add any in the comments section below. And with that, I will see you in 2024.